And I'm so excited to welcome my colleagues, Amanda and Stephanie from Residence Life. Amanda currently serves as the Director of Residence Life and has been in Residence Life for many years here at the University of Pittsburgh and is going to share all about living on campus and what your student can expect if they are living in a residence hall. Amanda, the awesome. virtual stage is yours. <laughs> thank you, Summer. Thank you so much. Um, and so excited to be here and thank you for, for having me. I am joined today by the absolutely phenomenal Stephanie Minnick. Um, Stephanie serves as uh, my administrative assistant in our office and is joining me today to keep an eye on the Q&A that's coming in um, to work to get some of your questions answered behind the scenes if you've got private questions you want to ask or will kick them to me to answer to the whole group. So I highly encourage you to use the, the Q&A feature today. That is certainly how I want to spend most of our time uh, together this evening. So again, uh, one, thanks to Stephanie for being here to offer that assistance and two, excited that you've all joined us this evening. Uh, my name is Amanda Reese. As uh, Summer mentioned, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I mean, I do currently serve as the Office of Residence Life's Director. Um, excited to be with you this evening. Um, I do have some content for you. I want to talk a little bit about more about what our office does, how we work to support your students, um, and uh, opportunities that we can provide to them. But then truly, I know particularly as you're planning to bring your student and you're packing your bags and you're working on your ship to pits um, and you're thinking about bringing your student to Oakland, um, want to really reserve a lot of our time together tonight for your questions. Know that uh, as the summer grows short, sorry to put that into the universe, but as the summer grows short, um, we know that this is probably on the forefront of your mind. So anything from logistics about what your student's move-in day is going to look like to um, what their first year with us is going to look like living in the residence halls, living with us. So um, like I said, I've got some content for us this evening, but then truly want to uh, turn it over to what's coming through in that Q&A. So don't hesitate. You can start dropping stuff in the Q&A um, right now. Just know if I answer it in my presentation, I might not double back to it, um, but excited to be with you all this evening. So um, I want to talk a little bit um, about who we are um, and where we um, work to support your students. Um, so we are, um, I want you to get to know a little bit more about us. So Residence Life um, is an office under the umbrella of student affairs. So when you're thinking about your students out of class experience and the way they are living and engaging in Oakland, student affairs are the partners that will help your student make that transition. We work very closely with our colleagues in the Office of New Student Programs. We're so excited to welcome your student to campus and get them connected to opportunities, leadership, and support services through student affairs. Something that I is think it, that is important to, to share is that at the University of Pittsburgh, housing and residence life are actually two separate offices. So the way I like to explain it is when you think about housing and your students' housing needs, housing and Panther Central manage the places and spaces. So my colleagues in housing have worked to send uh, students out their housing assignments, have worked hard to get them matched with their roommates and put them in their housing assignments. Um, they are the folks that work together to um, prompt billing and get your dining meal or uh, dining plans managed and your meal plans managed along with um, facility issues. So there's uh, something that breaks or needs repaired. Those are my partners in housing and facilities. Residence life, we like to refer to as the people and the experiences. So housing, places, and spaces, residence life, people, and experiences. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about who our students will meet uh, when they come to campus in terms of my team and my staff um, and who will work to support their residential experience through um, not only their first couple weeks as they move in, but truly through the entire academic year um, in their first year living with us at Pitt. So the first thing I want to name um, is that my central staff um, works really hard to engage in the business of the day, right? So my central staff works um, directly in the Office of Residence Life. They work to oversee and supervise our on the on the ground staff. Work to provide training, support, crisis management response through our. Um, central administrative leadership team. And I'm going to show you in a second an organizational chart just to help you kind of get a picture of what our office is able to provide. But that central staff really provides the leadership and direction um, 
and strategic work in getting the outcomes and values that we hold as a department and what we believe is important to your students' experience out into the halls. I hope your students get to know us. We love when our students come visit our central office. Um, I always welcome a conversation with a student to tell me about their residential experiences. But truth be told, I am not the person they're going to see day to day. Um, and I'm not the person that they're going to interact with. And transparently, I'm probably not the person they're going to talk to you about when they see you at Thanksgiving. Um, they're going to talk about their resident directors and their resident assistants. So our resident directors are folks who hold master's degree in the field of student affairs and work very closely with us in executing our engagement models and providing crisis management and student support response. Um, but they're the folks who live in and have offices in your students' residence halls. So they're the people who, as your student comes and goes from the building, they're going to see in their offices, they're going to see you know, having a meeting in a lounge um, or in a lobby, they're going to see them walking the buildings. Those resident directors also um, work to supervise and oversee our resident assistants or community assistants. Um, our RAs and CAs are students who are sophomores, juniors, and seniors who work um, for our department through their leadership in their desire to be a good support and engagement opportunity for our residential students. So we have over 6,200 students that live with us on campus and we have almost 200 resident assistants. So those resident assistants, you're gonna see them the first day your student moves in, they're gonna be sitting at welcome tables, they're gonna be walking the floors saying hi, they're gonna be getting connected to, to our new students and their pit residential experience. We also have a lot of expectations around how they engage in the work in terms of getting to know your student. So we have a very intentional model that we work through that makes um, our value of community and um, interpersonal communication and getting folks acclimated to living on campus, but also living in Pittsburgh, um, not just living on their floor, but living in their building, living in Pitt, living in the city. Um, so they're the person that's going to be a great first point of contact if your student has a question, if your student starts to feel a bit homesick, um, if your student needs support services. The goal of the resident assistant is to be a great triage point of contact. Our RAs are great at getting students to offices that can best support specific needs, getting them feeling connected to their roommate, to their floor mate to help them meet some new friends um, and also help them feel engaged and involved on campus. So I want to, um, again, I promised you an org chart. It, I don't expect you to commit this to memory, but one of the things I do wanna point out here is our staff is exists in a space to really give your students an opportunity to connect, engage, and find community while they're living here at Pitt. So, they, um, this is my team. You can find this on my website. That's really why I've put it up. I'll give you my web website information at the end of our time together. But I just want to let you know that not only do those RDs um, really do a phenomenal job in my most uh, not at all biased opinion, um, but they also then work very collaboratively with our central staff who's at the top of this org chart um, to find support and development in that space as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about what our students can expect through their residential experience. Um, the main thing is connection to community, right? We want our students to feel connected and for them to find places and spaces where they feel like they can belong. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is we wanna make sure we get them connected to who lives with them. So one of the first things our students will do is have a floor meeting and they will get to know their roommate. They will get to know the people who live on the floor, people who they share a bathroom with, who they share space with. Um, in the first few weeks, we will also do some expectation setting around how folks will live together in space. Um, the RAs will absolutely facilitate opportunities for roommates to complete what we call a roommate agreement. And that roommate agreement is for folks to sit down and have some pretty transparent conversations about how they live best together. So what expectations they have, where they're finding common ground and where they may need to do some cooperative conversation to find something that can be a good balance for both people to feel um, academically and personally successful in their living space, right? And some of that may involve um, some co good collaboration, um, but also knowing that 
there's someone in that space that's going to help in the advocacy of both students to feel heard and held um, in what in their needs in that space. And the RA will help them manage that. Um, but they also want to get them connected to folks who live around them. They want our students to know that they are a part of a bigger community than maybe just their suite, just their floor, um, but who lives around them in the building. Again, how they can get connected to other folks on other floors and other suites and other ways to start to really expand their residential community and think about it kind of outside of their room, outside of their suite, outside of their floor to get them connected to that bigger community and understand what it means to be a part of a larger community, particularly in a residential setting. Their RAs are also going to be a huge piece of their PIT experience and their PIT community. We have expectations that each RA is spending individual and significant time with each of their residents to check in and see how they're going, or how they're doing. They're checking in to see how their experience is. They're checking in to see if they have needs. They're checking in to see how their classes are going. If they have questions about how to register for classes, um, if they're feeling a little bit homesick, um, how things are going for them. And if there are things and ways that we could provide support for the experience to be better or different. Um, so the RA is not just really working to create that community in that space. But they're also forming one-on-one -on -one relationships with each of their residents. That's an important part of the work. Um, so I definitely would encourage our students to reach back when the RAs reach out. Um, that is critical to a really good community development. And that's honestly why our RAs get into the work um, in the first place. Our RAs want to have real relationships with people where they feel that they are contributing to that community positively, that they're forming relationships um, and that they're really engaging in the development of that community. But we also don't wanna be so small that we think their building is their whole world, right? Um, we want to make sure that they've got a good place that they can feel like they belong and they matter and they have a safe place to come back to outside of the classroom. But we also know that's not the whole Thing. They just don't go to class, come back to their building. So we want to make sure they're getting connected to the university and the city as well. So are they taking advantages of clubs and organizations, programming the university has to offer, cool things happening in the city? Um, a lot of our RAs will, in the first couple of weeks, take a group of residents to FIPS or to the museum because um, it's fun, but it also gets them out to experience the bigger city of Pittsburgh. Um, they'll help them figure out how to use the bus system, uh, ways to get them still in their community and get those connections made, but also help them feel connected to the university at large and particularly to um, the city of Pittsburgh. I alluded to this a couple times, um, but want to name also that my entire staff is a resource for safety and well-being. Um, in addition to the really good community and engagement work that my team has done, they are highly trained um, for to be a resource in times of need and crisis. Um, so oftentimes, if your student finds themselves in need of um, in the in need of mental health resources or emergency support resources. Our team is generally the first folks they go to, and therefore our team is highly trained in how to create and cultivate um, safety and make safety a priority. But when we're talking about safety, we're talking about it in a lot of ways. We're talking about emotional safety, mental health, physical safety. We work very closely with our university counseling center, our uh, mental health response team, HEART. I highly uh, encourage you to take a look at what a great program HEART is in terms of mental health, first responder care for our students. And then we do work very collaboratively with um, our university police and our um, front door security folks who work to keep the building safe as well. So again, lots of resources in all of these places and spaces, but I, I want to, to share that safety comes in a lot of ways and community comes in a lot of ways. And my team works to really create that robust and well-rounded experience when we're talking about community and safety. So a couple tips and tricks uh, for you before I, uh, like I said, I promised I would be try to be brief, but I do want to leave you with a couple tips and tricks as you're thinking about kind of your last couple weeks before um, our students come join us in August. Um, one of the things I will always share when given a platform to do so is to start thinking about roommate relationships and expectations and how as a 
perhaps this is the first time they're ever sharing space with someone um, or if they've shared space before, it's been with a sibling. Um, and so how are they setting expectations and having realistic conversations about where they can um, advocate for their needs, but also find collaboration and compromise when it comes to creating a living environment that is uh, successful for everyone who lives in the space. On the other side of that coin, a lot of our students are gonna live in single rooms. Um, so if you're not thinking about roommate relationships and how you're gonna be living in roommate spaces, I would highly encourage our students who have um, selected or been placed in single rooms to think about how they're going to get out and about to be able to get those connections. Again, the RAs have got it. They're gonna, they're gonna have those engagement moments. They're gonna get connected. They're gonna have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. But we always encourage our students who are living in a single room to think about how they are going to work to engage in the community, um, knowing that they're going to come back to their room by themselves and they're not going to have that that roommate relationship um, to get them connected. So how are they going to be thinking about how they can best get into those places and spaces in the community um, living in a single room? I have said that my staff is absolutely going to reach out to our new students. One of the things I, I really want to put a little bug in, in our students' ear is reach back. Um, this is their job, but they really enjoy it. Um, and they wouldn't be doing it if this wasn't something where they found excitement and value. So I highly encourage folks to think about when the RA stops by their room or when they see the RD at the welcome table, introduce yourself, Make sure that you're getting to know those folks. You're going to see them a lot, um, but I would encourage you when those folks reach out, reach back um, so that you can really start forming relationships with the people whose job it is to help you feel connected to campus. Um, I will also say this. I always share. I love my job in residence life. I am the most introvert of introverts in the world, um, and I have a very extroverted job. Uh, so I, I have much empathy with the fact that our students are gonna come to us and there's gonna be tons of opportunities to get engaged. That's what we want folks to do. But also don't get overwhelmed. You have an entire year to get connected, to find places and spaces that make you feel home, that make you feel like you've found folks, you've found community. They're gonna be, like I said, your RAs are gonna come meet you. Your RD is gonna come meet you. You're gonna have opportunities to get connected through Welcome Week programming and, and clubs and organizations that are really gonna be excited that you're here. Take advantage of those opportunities early, but know that it can be overwhelming. So think about how knowing all of that is coming to you in your first few days at Pitt, how you're gonna manage your time and how you're gonna manage in my world, how I manage my introverted self, right? How I take time to care for myself as I'm meeting new people and getting engaged in those in those spaces, how we know that it might be overwhelming, but to acknowledge that, hold that, and know that pick and choose what, what is interesting to you and where you see yourself fitting in. Give everything a try. Give some things a try. Um, the good news is there's a lot to get connected to, and their RA can certainly assist in helping kind of navigate that, but also kind of helping navigate that feeling of being overwhelmed and it, you know, you're going to get a lot of information in a short period of time. And RA, first of all, has been there. All of our first, all of our RAs have been first year students uh, in the last three years. So they certainly can hold some space about what that felt like for them, but also then how they see that now through the lens of being an RA um, and advice that they can provide in that space. The last thing I will share before I, I really do open it up to you is for parents and families, Think about how you're empowering your student in relationship building. I highly encourage you to, to again, think about how what your student is interested in in terms of how they're creating relationships, how they're setting expectations, and how to find their voice in that space. So I certainly, um, I know Summer does an amazing job of putting these programs on. Summer also is just a phenomenal resource throughout the year as well. So if your student calls you and says, hey, you know, my roommate and I aren't quite getting along or my roommate turns the lights on when they go to sleep. How do I, what do I do here? Um, I, I encourage you to think about how you can empower your student in that space, but also know that you can call Summer and I <laughs> to ask questions about how you can best support your student, how we can help you support your student. That's our job. Um, your job is, is to support your student. Our job is to support you through that. So certainly, as you're as you're thinking about your student coming 
um, to be with us um, and to stay with us. Think about not only how they're setting expectations, but how you're thinking about how you're going to empower them in that relationship building in those places and spaces where they're looking to find community. So I did promise um, I would be as, as short as possible um, so that I could truly open it up for questions. Um, but I wanted to just make note of um, how to get in touch with my office. So again, when you're thinking about your student's residential experience, Panther Central is always a great resource. They answer 24 seven and they do everything from clogged toilets to calling the police to getting an RA to your student. Residence Life, um, we do respond 24 hours. We are dispatched through Panther Central. So Pan Panther Central is never a bad call. But if you've got a question that's not urgent or you want to speak with us directly, lots of resources for you here. Um, reslife.pit.edu is our website. Like I said, that's where you can find all of the contact information for my staff. It's broken down by building. So where your student lives, you'll be able to find their resident director on there. Um, you can follow us on our socials at Pit Res Life. You can certainly reach out to us too here directly at the office, either at our um, email address, reslife at pit.edu, um, or give us a call. Um, and again, shout out to Stephanie because she checks that email and answers those phones. <laughs> so um, with that, I am going to leave this up, this last slide up so that you can see um, how to get in touch with us. But I do, I'm going to look at our Q&A right now um, and see um, some questions we've got going through. But I would um, certainly uh, highly encourage you to drop your questions in the Q&A. Um, please know, uh, I believe most, for the most part, your students probably aren't here with you. So I always say, I love when Summer says, like, ask the questions that would embarrass your students um, because I want to get your questions answered for you. So um, I'm seeing in um, the questions we've got some, the first one I'm going to answer is whether or not to get insurance um for your students for lost or damaged items um is it is it worth it I, i'm not going to speak to worth it um that's a conversation you need to have as a family but what i will tell you is the first thing i would recommend is if you have homeowners insurance check with your homeowners insurance because oftentimes um students away at school are covered through a homeowners insurance policy so my first thing to tell you would be Check with your homeowner's insurance if you have homeowner's insurance. If not, we do highly recommend renter's insurance if they're not covered under your homeowner's insurance um, because the university does not cover lost or damaged or stolen um, items. So we highly recommend renter's insurance. It's usually super affordable. We're talking like 10 to 20 bucks a month max um, to get a policy for your student that would cover them here. But truly the first thing I would tell you is if you have homeowner's insurance, um, check there first before you invest in a rental, um, in a renter's, uh, policy. So I'm seeing some questions about, um, gender and, um, uh, what genders are on what floors. So in our buildings that we consider traditional buildings, meaning there's a, a double loaded corridor for, if you're a building person, um, but where there is a community bathroom, that wing or that floor that shares that community bathroom is single gendered, meaning um, those are assigned the same gender for those rooms in those bathrooms. Inside of a suite, they are also the same gender that share a single bathroom, but the suite next to it that shares a different bathroom may be a different gender. So think of it as if you're in a more traditional residence hall, like a tower's um, or Nordenberg, um, that would be gendered by floor or by wing. Um, but if your student is in a suite, they are gendered by individual, um, suites. So that's, I'm seeing lots of questions about gender hope that I think I've tried to like grab all of the ones that are about, um, gender in this space. Yes. Um, <laughs> I love the question about the hall and penthouse. So I'm going to answer that. <laughs> Um, the Holland penthouse, um, Holland Hall, um, their community space is on the top floor. Um, so the floor above the 10th floor is our, um, 
is our lounge, laundry, and study spaces um, in the Holland Hall penthouse. Um, I love that students still call it that. But yes, so that is on the top floor of Holland Hall is our community space for that building. So there are no student rooms on that very top floor. That is just community space for the whole um, for the whole building. Um, so seeing also lots of questions about move-in. So I'm gonna answer a couple questions about move-in. Um, number one, arrival.pit.edu. Bookmark it, save it. That is your one-stop shop for information about arrival. Um, it tells you information about ship to pit. It tells you information about a move-in move -in days. Um, tons of great information at arrival.pit.edu. Um, what I can tell you is your student will also get information about their specific arrival day, including things like parking passes, um, where to go, where to find cart stations, cart stations, the good news is, um, pile all their stuff in a cart, take the cart upstairs. Um, that specific information will be sent directly to your students. So once we get closer to arrival, those things like those parking passes and everything will come to their individual email. But arrival.pit.edu um, is the best place to get that information. You can also search by building by floor for your students uh, specific arrival day and time through that arrival.pit.edu as well. Um, I'm also seeing ship to pit questions on here. I will be very honest with you. Ship to pit is not my wheelhouse. Um, so I can't answer these specific questions about some issues that we're having um, with the uh, mailing labels and with some of the questions we've got about um, how that process works. What I can tell you is uh, arrival.pit.edu is the best place to go to get information um, about the Ship to Pit program. It also has information on who and um, who and how to contact folks if you're having specific issues with Ship to Pit. So if you've got questions about those labels or anything, if you go to arrival.pit.edu, um, your Ship to Pit info will be on there. So I am uh, real sorry that I can't be more specific on that. Um, but correct. Well, one more question I see about ship to pit that I'm going to to speak on is correct. Ship to pit is not the same as the student's regular mailing address. Um, the student's regular mailing address can be found in two separate places. One, um, through their housing portal, it gives them their um, specific mailing address. You will mail things to the student's building. And depending on the building depends on the address and the address format. So um, definitely would say check um, your have your student check their housing portal to get that information. The mailing addresses are also available on Panther Central's website, pc.pit.edu. Um, but that's good. You're going to need your student's room number so they can give you the general addresses for each building. But you would need to know your student's room number um, as well. So ship to pit is unique to getting your stuff here. When for arrival. Their mailing addresses, that's where you can go on the portal or on the website to find their specific mailing addresses. Um, all right, still, you. there are great questions coming in, but now they're coming in hot and fast. So um, I'm going to do my best to keep um, moving on. Follow-up question about the Holland Hall Correct. There are no lounges on every floor. There's just that one huge lounge in the top of the building. All right. Um, answer my ship to pit questions. Um, so good questions about cleaning and bathrooms. I'm seeing a couple on here. So if a student has a bathroom that is internal to their room, the university will not clean that space. So if they have a private bath, there, the university does not come in and clean those spaces um, throughout the academic year. Um, the, the community bathrooms are cleaned on a regular schedule. Those schedules will be posted on those community bathroom doors. Um, so I would say if your student has a private bath based on their housing assignment, I would definitely recommend um, bringing some items to make sure that they're able to clean that bathroom as well. Um, some questions about living learning communities, which I love. Um, so some, some LLCs um, 
everyone who got a, um, who applied to and was accepted to a living learning community got a separate email outside of their housing notice of assignment emails. So um, I'm seeing some pretty specific questions about specific LLCs. Um, what I, I unfortunately unable to answer that granular of a question in this space, but what I will tell you, if your student has questions about their specific LLC, you can email us at reslife.pit.edu and we'll route that to um, my phenomenal assistant director, Michael Lee Sullivan, who works directly with our LLCs. Um, and Michael Lee will be able to get back about the nuances of specific LLCs. But what I can share is if a student applied to an LLC, um, they have a separate email out um, from Residence Life talking a little bit more about their living learning community. So, um, all right, so questions whoo, about roommates and living with a roommate. Um, lots of questions about living with a roommate and those are my favorite. So um, I'll speak to those now. Um, but one of the things that I would say is if you're, here's what I will say, your students, very well may have roommate conflict. Um, that's what happens when you share space with someone you don't know very well. Um, but the RA is absolutely their first point to help them mediate that. So we have a formal and informal mediation processes. So if a student comes to their RA and says, hey, my roommate keeps turning the lights on when I'm asleep and it's really driving me bonkers and I've talked to them and they're not stopping, can you help me? Um, that is absolutely a conversation that the RA can have with them in a couple ways. So one, if the student is looking for like, just help me figure out how to navigate this. Like, I don't want you to step in just yet, um, but I wanna know how I build skill to be able to advocate for myself in this space. Your RA's got you. Or the student can say, I have talked to them about this 10 times over. It doesn't seem to be working. I need some help here. The RA then can come in and have a mediation and say, hey, it looks like things aren't, aren't going according to plan. Let's revisit our roommate agreement. Let's talk about if we need to change our roommate agreement. Let's talk about how we live together in space and can help mediate that conversation um, in a way that benefits to resolution, right? So the ultimate goal is not turning on the lights when we don't want to turn the lights on. Um, but also turning on the lights when we need to and how we can find those those uh, middle grounds. So definitely a couple questions, but the, the theme there is the RA is the best first person for them to talk to. Again, whether that's just because they wanna build some skill to be able to self-advocate in that space, the RA can certainly help them, but the RA can step in and help mediate and help have a guided conversation between roommates to come to resolution. So um, again, in my wildly biased opinion, the RAs are phenomenal, but that's their job um, is to be able to help the students advocate for themselves or when that hasn't gone well, to be able to step in and offer um, mediation um, in, in space in that way. Um, I, um, so yeah, lots of good questions about roommates. The very short answer is talk to the RA. If the, the easiest answer to any question is talk to the RA. Um, the RA would be the best person to tell you what the answer is or where to, how they're going to get you connected to the person who has the answer. So, um, also seeing some questions, uh, quick logistical question. Would I suggest renting the micro fridge? Wondering if it's a good idea. It's easy. Um, I do not work directly with our partners in Microfridge, so I can't speak directly to the experience. But what I can tell you is if you want a microwave and refrigerator waiting in your room when you get there, Microfridge. If you have a hand me down, hand me down from your last three kids that went to college and you still got them, you still have a microwave and a refrigerator that you've been schlepping up and down <laughs> residence hall floors for years, bring it. Um, the things that I would say is definitely it is an ease of of service, right? They drop it off, they pick it up. Um, so that's what I would say about the micro fridge. I see a great follow up question that I'm going to speak to next. Uh, what are some of the most useless things that people bring to campus? What are some of the most useful? I don't, you are an anonymous attendee, but I wish every time I would did one of these, someone would ask me that question. It's a phenomenal question. Um, Here's what I will tell you, anything that saves space, anything that makes it organized. Um, so definitely is something that you wanna think about bringing. Um, I would also talk to roommates to make sure we're not duplicating efforts. So like, we don't need two TVs. We don't need two gaming systems. We don't need two refrigerators, two microwaves. Um, so making the best use of the space and using that in highly, um, um, highly organized ways. I will also tell you, because this is a great question, that the internet, social media, 
mailers and flyers from businesses are going to tell you all sorts of things that your student needs to bring. Um, and what I will tell you is think about what your student has at home. Um, what do they use day to day in home? That's what they need. If your student has never used a piece of technology, they probably don't need it here. If your student has never used um, a salt lamp, don't bring a salt lamp. Um, so, so I think to really have conversations about you got to move it in, you got to move it out. Um, what is your roommate bringing? What are you not? And does it serve a function? Does it store something? Does it um, light up a darker space? Does it, you know, does it really sor serve a function? Um, but also I wouldn't say that to the, to the discredit of bringing stuff that makes it feel familiar and feels like home, right? So bringing pictures, bringing knickknacks that that you like, right? Um, but just know that that space is precious. Um, so what really matters, what, what's really important in um, that space. And the only other thing I will say, which is truly just me, your student will not use as many decorative pillows as they think they will, or you think they need. Um, so that is my, that is, I see, I see baskets of pillows come, um, functional pillows. Awesome. Decorative pillows are going to go on the floor. They're never going to come back. So that's just, um, that's just me, uh, and my own lived experiences, but, um, <laughs> um, what is, um, lots of questions about, uh, if I can't reach my student, how do I get a hold of my student? If my student isn't, um, if my student isn't answering, I can't contact them. What do I do? So here's what I will tell you. Um, we get this question a lot and we get outreach a lot from our students. Um, if he doesn't answer, if your student's not answering the phone, if you're nervous about them, the first thing I would say is set up some expectations around when and how they're going to be in touch, right? Like, hey, I won't, I'll, I won't text you while I'm in class, but I'll call you when I'm done. Or, hey, if I'm going out with my friends, I'll let you know. Um, but have some conversations about where you um, find um, agreement on when you're going to connect with your student. If you're worried about your student's safety and well-being, you haven't heard from your kid in a couple of days, you're really concerned, they're not answering their phone. Our team can provide what we refer to as a wellness or a welfare check. Um, that is when you're concerned about your student safety. Um, and depending on the level of concern, our staff will work to get a hold of your student um, and have them and tell them that you're trying to outreach them, or we will involve law enforcement if you're worried about their safety. So definitely, I would say don't ever hesitate if you are concerned about your student's well-being and you haven't talked to them and haven't laid eyes on them. Never hesitate to call in for a wellness or a welfare check. Um, but oftentimes we see that's because a student forgot to say my class got moved or I went on a, a, you know, a field trip with my class. So having some conversations with your student about what communication is going to look like um, when they come to school is, is a really great pre-arrival conversation as well. Um, working through, um, speaking of safety, someone just asked this question, so I'm going to go to it next. Speaking of safety, um, there is absolutely a safety orientation for our students during their welcome week experience. And it is a mandatory program. Um, so they absolutely will have to get this information. Um, that uh, navigating your safety and well-being talks a lot about um, how to stay safe um, when you're navigating the city, how um, information around drinking and consuming responsibly, how to say no um, in ways that make you feel empowered. Um, how to be a good bystander, so how to look out for a friend. And then we talk about the resources that exist at the university to keep you safe. Um, he, here is my other plug that I will share. Um, tell your student to download the Rave Guardian app. They're going to hear that a million times during Welcome Week. The Rave Guardian app is an excellent resource that gets students to connect to emergency. Um, it also allows them to have a network of safety. So, hey, friends, I'm going here now. And when I get there, it'll tell you. And if I don't get there, it will tell you. And that really, that Rave Guardian app can contact police, can do lots of great stuff. So I would absolutely tell your students, 
um, to contact or excuse me, to download the Rave Guardian app. Um, but there's lots of orientations about safety, about safety in their building, about safety with one another, about safety around alcohol and other drugs, but also safety being in the city, um, how you navigate the city, how you navigate the city safely, um, and resources that the university has, like the Safe Rider program that can help um, through that as well. So um, seeing also some questions um, about the room change process. Um, if you just can't get it worked out with your um, roommate, there's definitely a process for that. But one of the steps in the process is to engage in that mediation. Um, so to have some conversations about, is this something that truly can't be reconciled? Or is this something that we can do in a, in a way that helps us both find some compromise and continue to live together in space? Um, but I will say this, the first two weeks, there is a freeze on room changes. So regardless of... Um, a student's request, a room change will not take place for the first two weeks while we engage in our ad drop period and manage our census. Um, and that gives students an opportunity to get their feet on the ground and really work through to get to know someone before they decide that roommate's not a match. Uh, but it also lets us know what rooms are available um, after our census period is over in two weeks. So no matter what, your student's going to be living in their room for two weeks and getting along with their roommate, uh, coexisting with their roommate for about two weeks. So definitely want to make sure that they're connected to how we navigate that. So um, even if a roommate, a room change does come to pass, it, it won't be immediate. So, um, and I think the last question I see on here is some questions about our residence halls when they open, when they close. Um, so the only time our residence halls are closed and students need to leave the residence halls unless they have requested 12 month housing is during the winter recess. So that is the break between um, fall semester and spring semester. Um, other times, spring break, uh, Thanksgiving break, fall break, um, our residence halls are open. Um, our dining is limited during those times, but there is still dining and our halls are still open. So um, if you are in need of 12 month housing um, to stay over that winter break, um, you would need to reach out to Panther Central, but those smaller breaks, spring break, Thanksgiving break, we, we do not um, close. So I think the last question I see is about dining. Couple things about dining. Um, yes, when we open, dining is open, um, but there's also gonna be some good information coming to your student with those parking passes and things about how you can get into dining, some dining passes for family during arrival um, and information about dining hours um, and availability. But what, yes, once we are open, um, dining is open. So if you go, um, to Panther Central's website, they link to our dining services. Or if you go to dine on campus slash pit, um, that is our dining services provider as well. Tons of information about hours, um, uh, um, availability, um, locations, menus, all of that stuff is dine on is at dine on campus. Um, course syllabus, uh, I will share. As an instructor, my syllabus is ready. <laughs> um, but the, your syllabi for your students in your book list will not likely be available um, until closer to the first week of class. Um, they certainly should be checking in to their Canvas pages. Um, they may not be live yet, um, but when they are live, that will have lists of information. But also during the add drop period um, is when students can um, uh, is also when students can go in and buy books they need, return books they didn't, um, add drop is the time for all of that as well. So we always tell students not to stress um, if they haven't gotten something before they get to campus. Um, a lot of that stuff will be very easily and readily accessible once they arrive. Um, so getting to and from Oakland, this is a great question. Um, the train station is downtown. Um, and the bus station is downtown and the airport is about a 45 minute to an hour ride on a bus. All of that is accessible by public transportation, which pit students ride for free. Um, so they can get on any um, regional transit bus, um, any PRT and ride that for free. The 28X is the airport flyer. Um, so that is the bus. If our students are needing airports, they're going to get real familiar with the 28X. Um, but there are city buses that will take them to and from the airport and to and from the um, bus station, train station downtown. The university also offers buses home for Thanksgiving and winter recess. Um, so 
major cities, nearby cities like DC, Philadelphia, New York. Um, there are buses that the university charters to go home as well. That information will be available once the semester starts on that pc.pit.edu site. Um, information about buses home. Um, last, I uh, haven't been able to find any information about uh, kitchens um, and amenities. Um, so what I will tell you is if you go to pc.pit.edu, um, they have building tours um, and building photos. If they don't have information, photos of the specific, um, <laughs> if they don't have specific information about the kitchen, there's narrative information about the kitchen. All of our kitchens that are in buildings with kitchens are community kitchens. Um, so there are community refrigerators, community um, stoves and things. So we encourage, while we do have um, some amenities, we would encourage students if they plan on doing a lot of cooking in the kitchen to bring a pan, you know, a, a set of utensils um, to make it easier for, for that space. Um, and the last question I see <laughs> might be my favorite of the night um, is how does move-in day work for towers? I can't imagine the logistics and dread of 19 floors of stairs. You're not going to do 19 floors of stairs. You can choose your own adventure, I suppose. Um, but I would not recommend doing 19 floors of stairs. Um, I would. So what I will tell you about Arrival is that it is a well-oiled machine, but it is it is a well-oiled chaotic machine. Um Follow your instructions for your best chance at having a, an expedited and really um, as easy an experience as possible. You're going to sit in traffic on Fifth or Forbes. Um, you're going to wait for an elevator. But when I tell you we have hundreds of members of staff working to move that as quickly as possible, we will we will get you in an elevator. We will get you a housing cart. We will get you up to your room. We tr we run those elevators um, all day. All they do is go up and down um, at um, with a staff member, making sure that people are getting where they need to go. People are managing um, parking. They're keeping an eye on parking so that as people are emptying their cars, those cars are being moved to long-term parking so more cars can turn over. They're getting carts where they need to go and they're getting elevators running as quickly as they can. So I will tell you, you will wait, um, but you do not have to walk up 19 uh, floors of stairs unless you feel called to see what that feels like. Um, I wouldn't, um, but also it is a very well um, oiled and executed machine. We've been doing it for a very long time. I highly recommend you familiarize yourself with the process, with the information that's coming to your student. The other thing I will say is really, if you can hold true to your date and arrival time, those arrival dates and times are bill, built to make this as smooth a process as possible. So that is built with traffic flow in mind. That is built with elevator flow in mind. That is built with parking in mind. Um, so the more folks that adhere to their move-in dates and times, the shorter those lines will be, the faster those elevators will go, and the easier the parking will be. So um, I, I, I will tell you this, um, it, is, it, is truly, it is truly a sight to behold, <laughs> um, but in, in kind of really great ways. The energy is phenomenal. Um, and it really does, um, there's a lot to do as well, but there's also a lot of people around to help. Um, there's people to point you in the right direction. There's people to get you the carts that you need. There's people to get you your access wristbands so you can come in and out of the building. Um, it's a lot of people, it's a lot of moving parts, um, but I promise it's as expeditious as we can make it. So um, I think I uh, have cleared out our Q&A. Stephanie, is there anything else that you're seeing in the, great. Um, well, I truly wanna say, like I said, my um, our contact information is still up on the screen for you. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. We work very closely with our partners in Panther Central. They're a great one-stop shop too, but they're also folks to be like, hey, that's a res life question. Let me get you connected to them. Um, and get you get you the answers that you need. But if you've heard nothing else, no, we are very excited that you you and your students are going to be here. Our staff is really excited and they're ready um, to help your students get connected to campus, to get connected to their community and really have a great experience living with us on campus. But we know that more questions are gonna pop up. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, tonight, but truly thank you for your time. Summer, thank you um for having us tonight and stephanie thank you for fielding all those questions <laughs> i appreciate it amanda thank you so much stephanie way to manage the q a there was lots coming in amanda i mean i talk to you multiple times a week but 
I love watching you get so excited talking about residence life. Like there was just so much energy. It makes me so excited for August. Aww. And thank you so much. The recording will be up on our student affairs YouTube channel. Hopefully in just a few days. I am on vacation next week. And so that might cause a little bit of a delay getting that recording up. But it will be up there. But that email is there as well as the parent and family resource email of parents at pit.edu is always open to you. Thank you and have a wonderful night.